Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a ThinkPad E16. This is going to apply to the Gen 2 Intel version. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside, and access and upgrade many of the internal components. So first thing, power down your computer through the start menu, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip your computer over to access the bottom case screws. This video is laid out like an owner manual or an instruction manual, and I'll guide you through the process of accessing your components. There are seven captive screws in this bottom case. Captive screws means that you'll unscrew them fully, but they won't actually come out of the case. The case may rise up a little in the corners, but the screws themselves will stay in, so don't worry if the screws are not coming out. After unscrewing all seven screws, you're going to take a small, flat, plastic pry tool and insert it at the seam of the bottom case in the computer near one of the back two corners. After lifting it up slightly from one of those two corners, you'll be able to proceed down here with another pry tool and get this section off and then start unclipping the rest of the bottom case. Once you do, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any assistance with tools or supplies for your computer project, as well as any replacement or upgrade parts for this specific model computer, the E16, there will be a link above, also below in the description, and it will be a list of all the tools and supplies that I use, as well as all those replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. Now before touching anything in a computer, it's always best to unplug your battery first. A computer is safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. This is your battery right down here. This is a 57 watt hour battery, 11.31 volts, and the part number from Lenovo is L23B3PG2. I will have all that information below in the description if you need help searching for a replacement. But again, I will have a replacement battery option in that link below I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. It's held down by these three screws near the red arrows and it plugs into the motherboard here near the green arrow. To unplug it, you would simply pull it to the left out of that motherboard port. Keep in mind with any wires or cables in a computer, try to apply pressure to the wires as little as possible. Try just to grip the plug in the port. You don't want to pull the wires right out of the plug or damage it. If you're here because your computer is not turning on, it could be a bad battery. You may need to replace it, but it also could be something else. Keep in mind that a laptop should still turn on and work even with a bad battery as long as the charger is plugged in. So if your computer is not turning on at all, there most likely is another issue than just a bad battery. I will have a video tutorial link above also below in the description, and it will be the troubleshooting process I use in my computer shop when the laptop's not turning on so I can find the cause and fix it. As far as memory, you have these two RAM slots right here side by side. Many of you will only have one stock, and this one will be empty. The user manual from Lenovo says that this computer is maxed out at 64 gigabytes of RAM. However, because the CPU can handle a lot more RAM, you may be able to install more RAM than the 64 gigabyte. If you do have success in doing that, please let me know. Um, I did not attempt to do that with this computer. This takes DDR5 RAM at 5600 megahertz. I will have all that information below in the description if you need it, but I will also include some RAM replacement and upgrade options below in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this computer. Many of you will have a 16 gigabyte stick that comes with the computer. So in that list, I will have a single 16 gigabyte stick. If either this one goes bad and you're looking to replace it at the lowest cost, or if you want to add a single additional 16 gigabyte stick here for an upgrade. In the event that this stick went bad and you want to buy two sticks of 16 gigabyte RAM to give yourself an upgrade, I will also include a 32 gigabyte kit which will have two 16 gigabyte sticks. And if you want to fully upgrade to the 64 gigabytes, I will have a 64 gigabyte kit, which will have two sticks 
of 32 gigabyte RAM. The way the RAM works is there's a spring-loaded metal arm on either side. To get the RAM out, you would gently pry those apart from each other, away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release. Oftentimes, it'll pop up a little bit, and then you can slide it out of this port right there. To get the RAM back in, you'll notice there's a long part to the RAM and a short part, so you can only get the RAM in one way. You can't put it in upside down. After getting it in, push it down. Make sure it's flush and straight. Make sure the gold section of the RAM is nice and even across here. And when it is, you just press in the center, and these metal arms will latch onto it and hold it in place. If you are here to upgrade your RAM, it's most likely you're looking for better speed, better performance. Another great way to get better speed and performance is by upgrading your storage. As far as storage, you have two different M.2 ports here. Many of you will have this one that takes the large 2280 size. You'll have that empty and you'll have a smaller 2242 drive in this M.2 port here, held down by a single screw on the right. Now this maxes out at one terabyte. That's about the size many of you will have. This port also maxes out at one terabyte. So below in the description in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer, I will include a small 2242 one terabyte drive if you need to replace this. And I will also have two different options for the larger 2280 solid state drives that go here. Uh, one will be a little faster, a little more powerful. Uh, the other will be very adequate to upgrade this if you want that extra one terabyte solid state drive upgrade. As a side note, if you would like to learn more about the differences between various kinds of solid state drives and hard drives and how one may be better for a certain use, I will have a video link above, also below in the description, and it will be a quick introduction on the differences between those different kinds of storage devices. I guess I can also mention if you are replacing or installing a new drive in your computer, you most likely are gonna have to install an operating system onto it afterwards. I will have two links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10. The other will show you how to install Windows 11. And as another shout out about this operation, if you are replacing your drive because it's gone bad and there's data on it that you want to recover, keep in mind that data recovery on bad drives is usually possible in most cases. I will have more information about the data recovery below in the description. After removing your battery, you can more easily access your CMOS battery right here. It's held down by double-sided tape. So if you're here to replace it, you can just pop that right off. It's very easy to take out and it plugs into the motherboard right here. And I will have a replacement CMOS battery option for you below in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. If you're here to simply reset your BIOS, you don't need to pull the battery up. You can leave it physically down right there. You would just need to unplug it from the motherboard for maybe 15, 20 seconds, and that's usually sufficient to reset your bio system. Make sure you don't pull on the wire again. In this case, make sure you only manipulate the plug to wiggle it out of that port. Uh, it is important to note that in most cases, this operation will not reset your BIOS password. It'll just reset your BIOS system settings. If you want more information on BIOS password resets, check out below in the FAQs in the description. Also, this BIOS reset option is a common troubleshooting step if your computer is not turning on. If that's why you're here, I will have the full troubleshooting tutorial link below in the description, also above in the video, showing you how to troubleshoot a laptop that's not turning on and how to fix it. Your Wi-Fi card is right here underneath your fan. It's held in by a single screw to the left, plugs into the port right here. After unscrewing it, you have these antenna wire. Those are just snaps. They snap directly on top of the Wi-Fi card. So you just pull them straight up and off and they'll snap off of that card. To get it back on though, they do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back on. And you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you try to force it. So just be patient. It, it could definitely be a pain in the butt if you're not used to it, but you will be able to get those on. I will have a replacement Wi-Fi card below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. But I will also have the Wi-Fi card specs below in the description if you want help finding your own card. 
Also, if you're here because you're not seeing your Wi-Fi options, if you're searching for it and you can't locate your Wi-Fi options, it's probably not a bad card. You probably need to update your drivers. I will have a video link above, also below in the description. It'll be a tutorial showing you how to get the right driver so you can access your Wi-Fi options. You have this speaker here on the right side of my screen next to your CMOS battery, and a wire comes down here threaded through the case all down the bottom of my screen to the left speaker here. Now this left speaker does not plug into the motherboard itself. It's just connected to the right speaker with this wire. And this right speaker plugs into the motherboard right here. Now these speaker wires are extra fragile. Definitely do not pull on them. Just use your fingernails or a pry tool to go on either side of that plug and wiggle it out of that port if you're replacing your speakers. Also, these speakers are not screwed down. If you see these black rubber washers over these posts for sound insulation, they just wiggle right off if you're replacing them. One big word of caution, if you are replacing these, make sure you take a picture or you pause this video or do something so that you can run this wire exactly as it's supposed to be run in your model computer. If you don't, you could pinch it when you try to put your bottom case back on. Also, if you're replacing your speakers because you're having sound quality issues, if your sound is not consistent across different software or different programs, it may not be a speaker issue. It may be a system or a driver issue. Now, if your speakers just sound like junk every time the bass kicks in, then yeah, they're blown and you probably need to replace them. But if that's not the case, try making sure your system and your drivers are updated first before trying to come in here for an invasive repair like this. I will have a video up top, also below in the description. It'll be a tutorial showing you how to make sure your system and drivers are updated. Your fan is right up here near the top of my screen. It's held in by these three screws here, and it plugs into the motherboard right there. Now be very careful with fan wires. They're especially fragile. Don't just pull on, the, on that fan when you unplug it. Just manipulate that plug to wiggle it out of that port. Your heat sink comes over here near the vent, goes over your CPU and the heat spreader right here. The CPU has four screws over it right there. Once you take that off, you can get your heat sink up. Uh, I don't know why you guys are here if you're here to replace your fan or clean it out or, or replace your heat sink. But a word of caution, if you expose the thermal paste to air for any reason, so if you take this heat sink up and you separate that thermal paste, some of it stays on the heat sink, some of it stays on the CPU, you do then need to reapply it. Once thermal paste has been exposed to air, it's not gonna do its job well. Below in the description in that link I told you about with all the tools and replacement parts for this computer, I will have a fan option, I will have a heat sink option, but I will also have a thermal paste option. Especially in this computer, you wanna use good thermal paste. Um, the CPU runs hot, all the storage and memory that this computer can have is actually kind of high for such a little crappy heat sink like this. So you're gonna wanna watch your heat in this model computer. If you would like help in that process, I will have a video tutorial link above, also below in the description. It'll show you how to fix an overheating laptop. And one of the things it will show you is how to clean all the old thermal paste off from the heat sink and the CPU. You don't wanna put new paste on top of old paste. And then it will also show you how to apply the right amount of new thermal paste. If you apply too little, it won't do its job. If you apply too much, you can lock heat in rather than facilitate its transport out. So again, that video will be below in the description if you need it. As far as the miscellaneous items here, this is your LCD cable in the upper right hand corner. Uh, you'll see a black clip right there that holds it down. And this point kind of goes for any of these ribbon cable connectors. You'll see some more here, the touchpad, the keyboard there, and you'll see these in various places in the computers you're working on. These black clips are extremely fragile. If you break one of those clips, you may not be able to find a replacement, which would mean that the ribbon cables may never secure down well again. So be very careful when operating these if you don't break it. The way to operate this is you would take a small, very, very flat pry tool. You would slide it up this way underneath the black clip and gently pop it open. It'll pop open kind of like a book cover. This part below will open, this part up top will be the hinge, and then you can slide the ribbon cable out. If you wanna put it back, you slide it back in. Be careful not to damage the clip. When it's in there nice and flush and straight, 
you gently put that black clip back down and that'll secure it in place. If you're trying to get at your LCD assembly, you would have to undo your LCD cable here that runs through this hinge assembly, and then your antenna wire here that plugged into your Wi-Fi card, you would have to unsnap those, unrun these wires from around the fan as they go through this hinge assembly here. Once you have those two cables free, you can unscrew your hinge assemblies from either side, and you can take your LCD assembly off. In my shop and in most computer shops, we kind of prefer to replace entire LCD assemblies instead of an LCD. It's faster, it's easier, less chance of breaking anything. But if you're doing a DIY project and cost is a factor, you may be trying to replace just the LCD as it's a lot cheaper than replacing the entire assembly. I will have a general tutorial below in the description showing you how to get into an LCD assembly to swap out your LCD. If that doesn't help enough and you need help with your specific model, leave me a comment and I can try to help you out. But that's it for this video, how to get inside the ThinkPad E16, access and upgrade many of the internal components.